Unfortunately, we gotta go here. The 2019 Road running shoes that just missed the mark for me. So it's December 14th, I can't believe it. I don't know where the time is going. I definitely thought, so so far we've done the road running shoes that worked out well, upper right hand corner, the trail running shoes that worked out well, and the trail running shoes that just kind of missed the mark in 2019. They're all available, upper right hand corner. And now the road running shoes that missed the mark a little bit in 2019. But notice that I changed the title of the vlog for today because uh, I decided that it was a, a little too, uh, I don't wanna say harsh, but it was a little too strong of words to say these shoes didn't work at all. Um, unlike the trail running shoes, which really they just didn't work. Um, so instead I said these shoes just need a little refining, okay? These shoes I'm about to mention, the three, uh, just, and I'm getting, I must say, I'm getting a little nitpicky, but uh, that is why I test all these shoes. And by the way, uh, I, I, there's so many out there. I've already mentioned a lot of them, but like I ran in the Hoka Rincon, the Carbon X, uh, the Mizuno Wave Knit R2, uh, another shoe from Mizuno, uh, the Wave Sky, I believe. Um, let's see, what else? You guys probably know better than I do. The Pegasus 36, of course, the Zoom Fly 3. Um, so I, I have tried a lot of road running shoes in 2019, but it's like, oh, you guys know. Like, in fact, I'd be, uh, well, this won't be the crush of the day, but I'd, I'd be curious to see your list of road running shoes that you were able to try out this year and it's like there's just only so many t so little time to try out uh all these different shoes all right so here we go shoe number one that just missed the mark actually a very recent one to the addition of the rotation i was kind of surprised i was pretty excited about it but yes it is the new balance 1080 v10 ah and uh, so here we go, eight millimeter stack, or uh, eight millimeter drop, I should say. I still have not found reliable information from New Balance about the stack height. My guess is 30 and 22, or maybe 31 and 23 it would be, I guess. Um, it's, so it's not a huge stack height, but it's getting up there. And I was expecting a little bit better of a, a little more cushioned ride through the 1080 V10. Uh, but that's not the main reason that this shoe missed the mark for me. In 2019, first of all, I gotta say, I do, I love the upper. I love the upper. I love the heel counter. In fact, ooh, I, I think they nailed it. And we'll come back to this upper in a second. It's the outsole. I think that the outsole is just a little, I think it's a little overbuilt. I don't think they need so much hard rubber on this outsole, uh, coupled with the fresh foam midsole. I was expecting, again, just a little more forgiveness on, and it is being advertised, I'm a little surprised, but it is being advertised as a long run shoe. And I could see that, but um, it just, it's just not, it's not doing it for me. And in fact, I had to add some green Spenco into the shoe to help uh, give a little more uh, relief from the pavement pounding that I've been doing leading into the Houston Marathon. So there you go, the 1080 V10. How will I use it in 2020? Probably won't, if I do, um, with with Spenco, maybe for an easy day shoe, but um, anyway, is it worth $150? No, I wouldn't pay. I would maybe $125. Okay, I think it is overpriced a little bit. Ah, and I know there's gonna. And let's listen. I know I'm gonna ruffle some feathers. Like I said a couple days ago, your body type might work great for this shoe. Okay, and it's or your feet, your foot strike. If you're maybe you're a heel striker, I am not. Maybe this might work well for you. So keep that in mind as I'm giving my opinions on shoes that uh, everyone's gait cycle is a little different. And uh, pairing, and that's where, you know, going to a running shoe store really helps, but pairing your stride with a shoe is unique to every single person. But for me, it just didn't work in 2019. So there you go, the New Balance 1080 V10. Did I mention it's 9.9 .9 ounces for men's size nine, which is actually, it feels pretty light, I'm, I must say. I like, the, I like the weight of the 1080 V10. Okay, moving on to shoe number two. Uh, I'm gonna switch it up here and go with, well, okay, so this shoe, uh, you're probably, this is probably no shocker to you. How many people were out there watching we're raving about, you know it, the beacon in 2018, not 2019. So they're so close. The beacon V1 from 2018 was perfect. It just, I just love the beacon V1. 
And the only reason that the Beacon V2, this one, is not working for me, and by the way, we're looking at a six millimeter stack height, uh, sorry, six millimeter drop, 26 millimeter in the heel, 20 in the forefoot, very comfy, exposed uh, fresh foam on the outsole, so not as much hard rubber like the 1080. Now, what I'm guessing, this is my prediction, all right, you ready for my bold prediction? I'm predicting that they're gonna take something similar to the 1080 upper and put it on the Beacon in 2020. Basically, the reason this shoe isn't working in 2019 is this upper. It's just scrunching up. Um, I think it's not, it's not forming well to my foot. Some people love it. I had a tough time with a toe box uh, because the fly knit of 2018 was just a little more malleable to my foot and I loved it. Now, I'm not, I'm not opposed to the heel counter here in the back. I think it's fine. Again, it's not, I don't think it's like a drastic jump forward from 2018, but my prediction, like I'm really, I must say, I really love what they did in the heel counter and the upper of the 1080 V10. So maybe they can just come together and be buddies in 2020, okay? And we're looking at 7.7 .7 ounces or 218 grams for the Beacon. Um, so it's a very lightweight shoe, perfect. I use it for easy days. Is it worth $120? I'm actually gonna say yes. And listen, a lot of people love the V2. I just struggled with it a little bit in 2019 because I, I yearned, I think, I, I think it was a, just a little bit of a letdown from the V1. Oh, I just don't like to see shoes go in the wrong direction. So that's why I just hoping they give a little more TLC for the Beacon V3, uh, I guess it would be, in 2020. Okay, last but not least, you know it, it's the Turbo, oh, I'm sorry, the Turbo V2. I'm sorry, everybody, or I guess just they call it the Turbo 2. So we're looking at a 10 millimeter uh, drop in the Turbo, so I actually kind of like that for more up-tempo days. Uh, we're looking at, I think it's 20, yes, yeah, 28 millimeter in the, in the heel, uh, 18 in the forefoot, so definitely a leaner shoe. And for weight, we're looking at uh, 7.2 ounces in men's size nine. So a nice lightweight shoe. And if you've been watching the channel a lot, you know why exactly I do not. Um, the Turbo 2 did not work for me in 2019 is that it did lose some weight from 2018. Do I have it out here? I do not. Is that the heel count, basically the upper is, uh, is streamlined. It's, uh, sorry, not streamlined. The upper is, uh, pared down, meaning it, the material that they used is not as thick as the 2018 iteration, but I think they sacrificed some comfort from 2018 to 2019, especially through the heel counter. Uh, so this heel counter actually dug into my Achilles tendon and caused my Achilles tendon, both of them, to, to bleed. And I think a lot of you wondered, like, Seth, why are you not wearing the Turbo 2 anymore? It's because it caused, it started, uh, I basically had some really bad blisters on the back of my Achilles tendon back in, uh, I guess it would be summertime. And that is why it just did not work out for me in 2019. I'm hoping that Nike, uh, I love the fact that they are pushing the envelope and decided to uh, reduce the weight of the Turbo 2, but at the sacrifice of some basic comfort and padding through the collar of the shoe, uh, it's just not worth it in my humble opinion. So that is all, and listen, again, uh, it, maybe the Turbo 2 worked out perfect, perfectly for you in 2019, maybe it did not, and oh yeah, is it worth, how will I use the Turbo 2 in 2020? I'm, I'm not gonna. In fact, you know, I bought a recently, I'm so excited, I haven't even worn them yet because my big toenail is about to fall off, so it's just like a little too tender for a new shoe, but basically I bought a 2018, uh, the Turbo 1, about two weeks ago to wear now leading into Houston because I love the Turbo One feel so, so much as far as the upper goes. And so I can't wait to use that. So is it worth $180, the Turbo Two? No, 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 $180, no. Uh, but I got the Turbo One for, I think it was like right about 100, maybe 110. I have to, on Black, it was right around Black Friday. So I got a pretty good deal. So I felt good about that, but that is my, those are my three road shoes of 2019 that just need a little TLC in 2020. It's like, they're good shoes. I won't say great shoes, but uh, just like, eh, let's just tweak it maybe. So everyone's probably very excited to see what they do for all three of these, the 1080, the Beacon, and the Turbo leading in 
to the new year. All right, everyone, question of the day. Let me know your thoughts on the three or one road training shoes that just kind of need a little TLC in the new year or maybe completely miss the mark for you in 2019. You guys rock. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. All right, we're going to toss it back to the road shoes that did work on the right, all right, and the trail shoes that did work well in 2019 on the left. You know, you guys, probably many of you have already seen both of those vlogs. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. As always, onward and upward. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.